Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I wanted to answer some frequently asked questions. So I have five questions that I see all the time. So I figured I'd just go ahead and knock them out in one video to kind of help you. Um, and maybe I'll start linking back to this video so that I can answer some of those questions uh, without having to answer them over and over again. Um, so I, I love getting questions and I love answering them, but I figured it would just be easier if I put them in one format. And if you have any other questions, please post them in the comment section below. And if I get enough questions, I'll do a part two for the frequently asked questions. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first one is, do I varnish my paintings? The answer is no, for the most part. Okay, so for the the gloss enamel paintings, the gloss is already really shiny. In fact, I have one here and um, you can see, just you can see how reflective the light is on this painting and it doesn't have varnish on it. So on most of my gloss enamel paintings, the flatter ones, I don't put any varnish because it really doesn't need it. You can see that this is a gloss enamel painting and it, it's fairly um, flat. So the painting is flat, so the shine is pretty much already set all the way through. So I don't varnish those paintings. There are some that I do, and that's usually when I use acrylic instead of gloss enamel. So when I use acrylic, sometimes I will varnish those paintings or I will varnish a gloss enamel painting if the shine throughout the painting is not fairly even. So like if I have one part that's really shiny because there's you know a lot of paint dried in that area, um, and then I have another area where not as much paint dried, then I'll use a varnish just to even out the shine. And I always use a gloss varnish and never use a matte varnish. Inherently, the paint doesn't really need varnish because it's fine, it's not gonna hurt it to not have varnish on it. But if you're trying to go for the shine, then use a gloss uh, varnish on that. Now I've only used um, the, I think it's the Liquitex one, um, but I've heard the, that there are some good uh, like oil slash acrylic varnishes out there. I think like Faber-Castell or something like that makes on. I don't remember exactly, but I've only used Liquitex. I've heard there's some, some better ones out there. So it's really dependent on your preference. But again, I only use it if the shine is not even on the painting or if it's an acrylic painting, uh, acrylic tends to be a little flatter or matter um, than like more matte than the gloss enamel. So I will use it on those ones. It just depends on the painting and kind of the situation. So again, it just depends and it's wholly preference. Paintings really don't need it. So if you don't want to put on there, then don't. I know artists who do acrylic paintings, but they don't put varnish on it. So that's, uh, that's your call and that's when I use it. So the next one is, I've been getting a lot of questions on Saatchi art and how that works. Okay, so Saatchi art, uh, if you've never heard of it, is just an online gallery. So essentially somebody goes to Saatchi Art's website, which I believe is just saatchiart.com. Um, they go to the website, you list your paintings or your art or whatever, you list it on there and then someone someone buys it through Saatchi Art, uh, you get part you get a large portion of that commission and then they take a part of that commission and then you ship it out according to their specifications so let's say that i list a painting for 200 dollars on saatchi art well they pay out two-thirds of the price to you so you'd get 65 percent of that uh so it would be like 130 dollars right something like that so you get two thirds of that, uh, they get the other third, but then there's also like a listing fee. So that's like 5% or it, it's it's not something astronomical and you don't have to worry about that. That's just a price that they add on to the actual painting. So if you list it at 200, it might be like 210 or 215, something like that, uh, because that's their listing fee. So they take a listing fee, but they also are the ones that pay for the shipping. So that, that third that's coming out uh, of your your payment or whatever, or the listing price that you put it at, that third that they take also covers your shipping. So you don't pay for shipping once the item sells. So if I sell a painting, say I list it at 200, right? And then it sells, they get their third, um, and then I get 130 out of that. I do have to pay for the packing supplies. So I would have to pay for either the box or the, I'd have to make a wooden shipping crate, which I have a video about. Um, I would have to make that container for it to ship. So I'd have to, you know, and I have to follow their specifications. So they're very specific on how they want you to ship their items. And you could technically just ignore it and send it however you want. However, 
if the item is damaged um, and you did not follow those shipping instructions, they will not pay you out for it. So they will take that as a loss because you didn't follow their instructions and they will not pay you for anything. They will not give you any money for that piece. So it's, it's your call, but I've always followed the directions as best as I could because I want one, I want the product to get there as, you know, as advertised. I want it to get there in one piece and no broken stuff and all that. But two, like I do want to get paid. So I do follow their instructions. So it's uh so anyway so you you would uh schedule a pickup and then basically it's ups freight i believe that just comes and picks it up depends on where you live but they send a courier to come get the item they scan it and then they take it so they you pay for the shipping supplies to ship it but they pay for the actual shipping which is the expensive part and again that comes out of the third that they receive for the item. So something to keep in mind. So when you're listing items on Sachi Art, you have to list them to a reasonable price. You don't want to go like way crazy, especially if you're not known as an artist, but you want it to be enough where it's going to be, it's going to pay for their end of the shipping, but it's also, you're going to have money left over one as a profit to recoup the costs of, of making that piece, but two also to pay for the shipping uh, supplies. So and that's how that works. Um, so you pay for the, you know, you create your piece, you pay for the shipping supplies, but then they actually pay for the shipping. They send a courier to come get it and then it gets shipped out. And then you get paid uh, usually two weeks later. Um, it just depends on how long it takes for the item to get to the person. So basically it ships out. And then once that person, you know, acknowledges that it all came, that everything's fine, then that goes back to Sachi Art. Sachi Art gets it. And then once they've, once it's been approved that the item re they received it and everything, everything's good, then they will issue like a payment thing. So I would say it could take around a month to actually get paid for a piece. So that's something to, to keep in mind. However, my experience with Saatchi Art has not been bad. Like I have not had any issues I've shipped. I think, I think I've sold like four or five items through them. Not a lot, but all of them have gotten to where they needed to be and everybody got paid and no issues. So just something to think about. All right, next is the type of paper that I use for painting or, you know, what type of painting paper should you use for uh, doing painted works? Okay, so the best paper you can get is Arches paper. Arches paper is phenomenal, super expensive. So if you can afford Arches paper, it's literally A-R-C-H-E-S, Arches paper. If you can afford that, get that because it is great. But for most people uh, with a limited budget, you probably can't afford that. So uh, I'm not going to suggest that. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Okay, so Strathmore, um, Strathmore has uh, acrylic paper. So I would recommend getting acrylic paper uh, because it's very thick and it's very stiff. Um, I currently use watercolor paper. <sighs> There's two reasons for that. And I, and I, I use both. I use the... Um, I use the Canton paper and the Strathmore. You can get those at like your local hobby stores or whatever. If your hobby store has acrylic paper, either their own brand or Canton or Strathmore or whatever, use acrylic paper, okay? I'm telling you right off the bat that that is probably the best, most durable paper you can get for painting with acrylic or gloss enamel because it's very durable. However, I use uh, watercolor paper. It's only because... That one I can find very easily all the time. And I actually just stockpiled a bunch of it when I first started painting on paper. So I, I just have a lot of it. So I don't recommend watercolor paper. I recommend acrylic paper. Um, doesn't really matter the brand, but acrylic paper is just, it's it's durable for what, what you're gonna use it for. So that's the one I'm gonna recommend is acrylic paper. You really can use whatever you want. You can use mixed media, you can use watercolor paper. It's really up to you. Um, the only problem that I have with those is that they kind of curl or warp. Um, sometimes there's your painting on them or later on. So again, I'm gonna recommend acrylic paper. Doesn't really matter the brand if it's Strathmore or Canson or, or whatever. So acrylic paper, okay? So that's the type of paper I would recommend for painting on. Uh, next is the paint. So I get asked this all the time. What kind of paints do I use? I've even explained this multiple times in my videos, but once again, I will show you just so you have it. 
uh, in hand. So I use two types of paints. I use a uh, acrylic and then gloss enamel. Gloss enamel is kind of my my niche or my forte. Um, and I use very specific gloss enamel and then I'll go over the acrylic. So here's the gloss enamel. Uh, the brand is called Dunn Edwards. So Dunn Edwards is, it's a local paint company here in the Southwest because I'm in Arizona in the US. So this is, uh, Dunn Edwards is a, a paint brand that's out here in the Southwest, specifically made for the Southwest because it's so hot, right? So people use it here on like guardrails and stuff because high gloss paint is for like fire hydrants, uh, like guardrails, you know, the shiny stuff that you see that's painted, that's metal. So uh, this is gloss enamel. Now for me, it even says gloss enamel on the, on the thing. So it's hard to see but you should be able to see it. it says gloss enamel there. And then it also says high gloss. So my paint literally says gloss enamel on it. They don't always say that. Sometimes they'll just say high gloss and they don't say gloss enamel. That's essentially what it is. It's just high gloss house paint. That's really it. Um, but sometimes they'll say gloss enamel because it's specifically for, you know, things like fire hydrants or guardrails, you know, things that are metal, but are shiny. So. It says gloss enamel. So this is, again, this is a paint store, a paint company out here in Arizona. So I buy it from a paint store. Now, Home Depot does have some gloss enamels and, and some department stores have like gloss enamels, their own lines or from other companies. So you really just have to look at the, the part where it says high gloss. So you want high gloss paint. Um, and then if it says gloss enamel, then you're probably on the right track. So again, you can get it from a paint store. I've had better luck with paint stores than I have department stores, but I have found it in department stores. So high gloss, gloss enamel, they're pretty much the same thing. So that's the type of paint I use. Um, the other paint that I use that's a liquid paint that is not gloss enamel is PPG Metallics. So you can't read it because it's all over it. Uh, but it's PPG Metallics. This I got from Home Depot. Um, they, almost, they almost always only have uh, gold and silver. I use a lot of gold and silver. I really, really like gold and silver. Just, you know, so, so shiny. Um, but I use gold and silver all the time. So those two I actually get from Home Depot. So that's pretty easy. Uh, I don't know if they have it at Lowe's or other department stores, but Home Depot, I, I do find it pretty easily. Okay, so that is it for the liquid paints. Let's talk about the acrylic paints. So really, the the main paint that I use for painting... Oh, sorry, guys. I'm going to try to fix that. Uh, the main paint that I use for painting acrylic is just uh, Liquitex Basics. So, you know, it comes with these little things or these. Um, I just use Liquitex Basics because for the price, it creates a decent-looking painting. Okay, it's not the greatest paint, but it's not the worst either. I've had worse paints and I've had much better. Uh, I just think for most people who are doing just regular painting and they're not doing like super high ticket, you know, paintings, uh, I think that the Liquitex Basics is probably going to be good enough. And for the price, you know, it's, it's pretty decent. Now there are some, um, you know, if you shop at like Blick, Blick is a, is a art, like store, um, Blick's line is pretty good. It's it's kind of like the equivalent to Liquitex Basics. So Blick's is pretty good. It's a, it's about the equivalent. Um, they although again they both have like higher end stuff. Now if you're doing professional painting and stuff like that, then you'll want to do the highest that you can. But for regular paintings or paintings that you're selling for a couple hundred dollars, the Liquitex is pretty good. Um, so that's what I use. I use Liquitex Basics. And, you know, those are the types of paintings that I would usually varnish um, is those Liquitex paintings, uh, just depending on, you know, how it turns out or, or if somebody wants a specific way. So uh, that's what I use for the paint. So the last question um, I want to talk about is the techniques. So, you know, we do a lot of different techniques. So, um, you know, we do like I do the dab paintings, Pollock paintings, Gerard Richter paintings, uh, these line paintings. Uh, scrape paintings, all kinds of different things. So essentially one question I get is like, can you do all of the painting, all of the techniques with both types of paint? Um, so can you do like a Pollock style painting with acrylic paint? Or can you do, uh, you know, a Gerard Richter style painting, the scraped paintings where it's the, you know, the different layers with gloss enamel? The answer is yes. You could do technically any type of technique with any kind. So you could do a Pollock painting 
with acrylic paint? And I get asked that a lot, if you could use acrylic paint for that. The answer is yes, you can. The, the thing to, to think about though, is that it's going to produce a different type of result. So using gloss enamel, which is basically house paint versus using acrylic, they're gonna react differently. So even if you watered down acrylic so that it was the same consistency as the house paint, they're just, chemically, they're just different. They're similar because they're both paint and they're probably both water-based, but the thing is, is that they're just going to react differently. So technically speaking, yes, you could, you could do any type of thing with any type of, you know, you could do any technique with any type of uh, paint, but they're gonna react differently and structurally they're different. So it's like, one issue that if you've watched any of my videos, I've had an issue with is trying to do these Gerard Richter, you know, scraped paintings with gloss enamel. It's very challenging because gloss enamel is just so watery, you know, it's so liquidy that it has no body to it, it has no structure, but acrylic paint has binders in it. So it's thicker and it has a body to it. So when you do, you know, a scrape painting with acrylic paint, it, it sits on the surface because it's got a body. So you can kind of layer those paints. Whereas with gloss enamel, it, it has no body. So when you scrape it, it just flattens because it's almost, it's super wet. So, you know, I could do those types of paintings, but they, they produce wildly different results because of their chemical structure. So you could do any of the techniques with any type of paint, they're just gonna be different. And you just kind of have to do that yourself to kind of learn that. But yes, you could do a Pollock painting with acrylic, or you could do a Gerard Richter painting with gloss enamel, as opposed to the other way. Um, they're just going to yield different results and you have to do it to kind of understand the difference in those uh, properties. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. But that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, it was actually a little longer than I thought, but hopefully answering some of these questions will uh, you know, just help you. And I'm going to put this video out there so that people who have those questions, I can just kind of link to the video, um, over and over again. So anyways, thank you again for watching again. i my name is Cody. I hope you enjoyed this video in the next video, you know, we'll do some more painting and, uh, you know, just thank you again for watching. So see you guys take care. God bless and, uh, have a great rest of the day. Take care.